When the first Polaris produced Indian motorcycles were introduced on Main Street at the 2013 Sturgis Rally, the Chieftain was the biggest surprise of the bunch and elicited the loudest ovation from the crowd. A motorcycle with a fork-mounted fairing and hard saddlebags was a first for the company. It gave them a strong competitor in a very lucrative niche, both in the production and aftermarket sectors. The Chieftain matched up with the hugely popular bagger of Indian's primary American competitor, the Harley-Davidson Street Glide. And the bagger segment has been riding a wave of popularity in recent years, spawning TV shows like Biker Battleground Phoenix. Go to just about any custom bike show and the bagger competition is always the most hotly contested. Of course, simply launching a bike into a new niche doesn't mean crap if the proper amount of time hasn't gone into its design and engineering. Fortunately, Indian did its homework and produced a bike that strikes an emotional chord aesthetically and also performs at competitive levels with other top-tier baggers. Though baggers are identified by signature cues, Indian did an admirable job of providing the chieftain with its own identity by combining heritage and modern traits. Balanced fenders, the headdress logo on the tank, and the war bonnet emblem on the front fender pay tribute to its predecessors. The chieftain's thunderous V-twin does likewise as the design of its fins and parallel pushrow tubes were borrowed from chiefs of the early 1940s. The Chieftain's front fairing sports its own unique design, classy like a Cadillac, from the chrome wings around its headlight to the tidy integration of the turn signals. The motorcycle's 1811cc engine is packaged tightly within a cast aluminum chassis, a first for the company. Using cast and forged aluminum keeps the frames weighed down to a claim 58 pounds. The aluminum design also houses the airbox in the frame's backbone, which helps force feed the monster power plant. The motorcycle is equipped with a bevy of electronic conveniences, including a windscreen that raises and lowers at the push of a button, cruise control, saddlebags that lock remotely, keyless ignition and ABS. Yes, Indian has done a bang-up job of finding the happy median between old and new. To sample the merits of the 2016 Chieftain, we hopped on board Indian's bagger in Austin, Texas, and set our sights on Fayetteville, Arkansas. We were headed to the bikes, blues and barbecue rally and what better way to give the Chieftain a proper shakedown than head out on a 6-day, 1600-mile road trip through three states and over the Ozarks. This particular 2016 Indian Chieftain was outfitted with some useful aftermarket additions, including a Clockworks flare windshield, wide solo seat and luggage rack, with the last two straight out of Indian's P in a catalogue. It also sported the new silver smoke colorway, and while we know Indian's trademark is red, the silver makes for one devilishly handsome Chieftain. Packing for the road, the luggage rack accessory immediately paid dividends. We crammed the saddlebags full, from clothes to cameras to a 17-inch laptop, each bag providing 17.2 gallons of storage space. But we still had our backpack left over, which we didn't want to sling over our back, so we bungeed it down on the rack. The Clockworks flare windshield also proved its worth. In the down position, my head was buffeted by quite a bit at freeway speed but raising it fully sent airflow up and over the crown of my helmet. However, in this position there was some whistling at speed coming from underneath. On the road, the Thunderstroke 111 of the Chieftain delivers an immediate bounty of torque. The clutch lever is tight and springy, but the Chieftain uses throttle by wire, with the system dialed in nicely so it quickly responds to every twist. Last year we threw the Chieftain on our dyno where it registered a verifiable 102.15 pounds foot at 3000 rpm and 74.40 horsepower at 4600 rpm. It reaches the 100 pounds foot plateau as low as 2300 rpm and gives riders the capacity to run it low in the range without downshifting because it has no problems picking back up.
It stays in that 100 pounds foot range up to 3,200 rpm, and the same engine the current Chieftain runs put up a respectable 0 60 miles per hour time of 5.3 seconds on the street in the hands of our road test editor Adam Wahid. First gear propels the big bagger up to about 43 miles per hour before redlining at approximately 5,600 rpm. Second gear winding out at near 63 miles per hour at a bit lower 5,500 rpm. Need to get up to freeway speed? The big V-twin has no problems. Once there, shift it up a few gears and it settles into a healthy low rev cadence without rattling your teeth out and has solid mid at the ready when it comes time to scoot past traffic. Many Texas highways sport 75 miles per hour speed limits and the Indian Chieftain will cruise comfortably at 80 miles per hour all day long, doing so for us at an efficient 38.42 miles per gallon. A testament to its credentials as a road tripper is the fact that after a 600 mile day in the saddle I still felt relatively fresh and easily could have ridden more miles. The front fairing not only looks slick, it shields riders well. The solo seat from the Indian Accessories catalog is shaped sound and supports riders with few pressure points. The floorboards are long so you can shift your feet around on those occasions when fatigue does settle in and the riding position is open and relaxed for a 6 foot tall rider. The suspension setup also makes long stints in the saddle that much easier. Though it runs a single shock on the rear, the ride is smooth and rebound as per near ideal. The pneumatic rear is preload adjustable but requires a hand pump and the removal of the left side cover below the seat to access the air fitting above the fuse box. The front has an ample 4.7 inches of travel but rebounds quickly and the front can feel a tad bouncy on rough roads.